Hey guys, it's Woody, and I am the Exceptional Nerd. So this is a new video series I'm doing. There'll probably be at least three parts, and it's how networking works with relation to online gaming. So I'm trying to strike a balance here. I am interested in what sorts of troubles you guys have, but I'm not interested in being your you know, personal unpaid support department. So it, you know, if you're hoping that you can send me personal messages and have me configure your router, then you're just flat out out of luck. On the other hand, I do intend to cover things like what to do if your NAT's not set to open and you know, why that might be it and uh, what to look for in a network connection so you can figure out if, uh, if maybe you know your problems are really related to your network connection or if you're just bad at the game. <laughs> Who knows? But um, this is a new series and let's get on with it. So I have two internet connections at my house and I'm going to explain what we're looking at here a little bit. Uh, on the left is Time Warner and on the right is Uverse. Now the download speeds on each of them are way more than enough for gaming. Uh, the, gaming doesn't really take more than one megabit up or down even if you host. So to have you know, 14 or, or 16 doesn't really matter. I could have 50. A lot of guys sometimes look at some of these guys with really, really great connections and say, oh, he has 50 megabit download. He's a super host. Yeah, the, the truth is he just has a lot of extra download that nobody's using. Um, the upload oftentimes in residential connections, and, and you can see mine's like that, even with my Time Warner, which is a business class connection on the left, the upload is really restricted. And in, in this case, the upload is enough to host on, you know, host any kind of game that, that you typically play on the Xbox. But oftentimes, like other people have uh, upload restrictions that are even lower than mine. And in a case like that, it can be an, a problem for them. You know, they're not getting their information to the server quick enough. And that, that's a problem. The other thing is the ping. Ping is a really big deal in online gaming. And uh, what this is, is it's a measure of how long it takes your data to get from you know, your Xbox, or in this case, my computer, to the server that I'm pinging and back. So if your Xbox or PlayStation or PC takes a long time to send its information to the other person that you're playing with, then that can be a significant disadvantage. You know, that guy's shots register before you. That guy is notified of player movements before you. That guy's notified of all sorts of things. If I run around a corner and shoot you and you didn't even see me in that whole death sequence, there's a good chance that it's because your network problems and, you know, I was able to get there, get shots on you, and tell the host about it before you even knew that I was on, that I was there. And, and oftentimes in the community, people talk th about how you know, oh, his shots registered, or the hit registration is a little bit better. A bad network connection is a lot more than hit registration. All the data having to do with airstrikes, where that air power is, player movements, things that are happening on the map as well as you know, where your bullets go and, and where that player is while you're shooting at him. All of these things are impacted by network connections. So if you were to look at this alone, you would say, huh, well, they both have more than enough download. The one on the left has more upload and it has a lower ping. Therefore, the Time Warner connection is the better connection for gaming. The thing is you don't have enough data because if you were to look at this alone, you'd make the wrong call. Let's look at some more of this and uh, see what we can learn. So now let's take another look at the numbers. You know, on the left, on my Time Warner connection, the big thing I'm focused on here is that quality of service number. And you can see there's 70% compared to 98%. And that actually is a pretty big difference, but it's not as significant as it has been during some other tests. Other tests. Sorry, I couldn't recreate it for this. But that Time Warner line often drops to a quality of service rating somewhere around 28%, which is dreadful. And what that means is this. Data from your Xbox is delivered in packets, little bundles, right? It's not just one big stream. It, they wrap it up in the little packages. And there's two kinds, TCP and UDP. Because my quality of service is low, those packets are arriving in the wrong order. Each of them is supposed to arrive in a certain sequence. In the case of TCP, if they arrive 1, 2, 5, 6, then it has to sit there and wait for 3 and 4 to arrive before it can do anything with five and six. You know, these things come in an order. So even though the ping was faster on that Time Warner connection, because the packets didn't come in order, that was a problem And on TCP type connections, which is one of the things that uh, Black Ops or Call of Duty or all, the, all these online games use. They would have to wait for the other packets to arrive and then reassemble them in the correct order before it could do anything with them. And so while it had a decent ping, it was really worse than it seemed. On the other hand, there's also UDP traffic, right? Not TCP, but UDP. And that's a little different in that if the packets arrive out of order, it just throws them away. It just tosses them and says, I forget about it. We'll just pretend this never happened and move on. So 
With my Time Warner connection, some of the data was having to wait on out-of-order packets coming, and some of the data was just being thrown away, and it was a really bad connection. With the Uverse, while the ping is worse, and 40 milliseconds is uh, not that great, um, and that's to my local server, by the way. While, while the ping is worse, because the pa because that quality of service is so much higher, 98%, and sometimes when I test it, I get 99%, it turned out to be a better connection overall, even though it was slower. So that's part one of this series. I think next time I'm going to talk about what an open, moderate, and closed net means and how you can fix it, and what impact it has on your gaming. So uh, look forward to future videos. Have a good day.